How many of you participated in last week's seed planting? You did it? Yes. Let me show you these two things. Uh, I explained one, but I want to give you another one. I'll start with the one that I already explained last week because there is the, uh, when you act on faith, you need to understand faith is not supposed to be alone. The Bible says, faith being alone is dead. So, acting on faith is not enough. You need to understand faith is alive when it's combined, when it goes together with works. That's what the Bible says in James. Faith goes together with works. And when faith goes together with works, it produces always, always. Faith, when it goes together with the works, it will always produce. It will always produce. So when you have good faith, you need to have the same kind of works. It's not just any work, but it should have. It says, even so faith, if it has not works, is dead. Can you see that? Being what? Alone. So don't leave faith alone. Faith alone is dead. It's as good as not having faith at all. So a man that has acted in faith, but fails to, to, to do the works of faith, is as good as a person who doesn't have faith. And you will not see the results of his faith. Faith goes together with the works. And the combination of the two is what produces the results. Is what produces the results. Are you getting this? Yeah, now, these are some of the things that I want you to see. It, it helps you to know what to do after that. In Mark chapter 4, starting reading from verse 20, uh, let's start reading from verse 20, 26. 26, 27, I read about it, but I'll read another one which I really want you to get it. But look at this, because it tells us something. It says, and he said, so is the kingdom of God. Anytime he says, so is, he's trying to help you to understand how the kingdom works. How the kingdom works. So anything else done in the kingdom, he will tell you, it is like a man casting the seed in the ground. This is how the kingdom is. So it is telling you, in the kingdom of God, you start with the seed. Everything else in the kingdom starts with the seed. Have you seen the Bible says, and he said, so is the kingdom of God. You see that? That's how the kingdom of God is. It starts with the seed. There is a seed for the anointing. There is a seed for the grace. It starts with the seed. You have to identify and discern the seeds for that which you are involved in, in the kingdom of God. There is seeds, or there are seeds, in the kingdom of God. Now look at this. It says, once you find the, the seed, and you should sleep. You relax, you sleep, you lie, day and night. And the seed should spring and grow up. But while you are sleeping and rising, day and night is passing, your seed is working. That's what he's saying there. He says, when it is springing and growing up, you know not. How? You never know. But what is your role? Expectancy. You still hold in your mind something is going on. How? I don't know. I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. Is it today? Is God going to open doors? 
Is God going to connect me to someone? You have no idea. But that does not mean you should completely forget about it. What you don't know is how it's working. What is happening? But you know something is glowing and springing up. Yes. God cannot receive a seed without acting on it. Hey. It will never happen. Any seed that reaches to God, God will act on it. We all didn't know about seed. Seed is God's idea. When he made a creation, he made a creation with a seed. You never actually asked God for a seed principle. Seed is God's design and an idea. And he respects it. Any seed that reaches him, God will act on it. He will act on it. He won't get to God and God remains silent. That's where now the problem comes. Because the problem is, do, did, like now, the question is, have we planted a seed? Everyone will say yes. But is that really a seed? If God was showing you what a seed is, and you, you disobeyed, then what you planted is not a seed. To, to ask that God did not direct us, then what we have planted is a seed. Because a seed can come from your own decision. You can decide. The Bible says, whatsoever, whatsoever means anything, a man soweth. You, you see that? But if God showed you a seed, like for example, when God went to Abraham and he said, I need Isaac, Abraham says, no, I'll give you instead of Isaac, I'll give you 20,000 sheep. <coughs> God no, could not have received it. That does not mean God would have said, okay, okay, this is still a seed, I will receive it. No, he said Isaac. So the seed was Isaac. When God says it's Isaac and you decide, no, let it be the sheep, it won't be a seed. Don't forget about it. Now let me get back to that pie, part so that you can see something. Give me back that 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm just helping you because I want you to have a good expectancy. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, we start from verse 6. 6. I opened this, but I want just to take. We are getting into our subject today. It's not like it's going to be a seed. Say, so, uh, uh, have we changed? No, we haven't changed the subject. He says, but I didn't come for a CD today, sir. I came for something different. That's the, the problem. The problem is that I'm your pastor. <laughs> I'm the one who decides uh, with the with the with the with the with the consultation with the spirit, the materials that I need to share. You see that? Yeah. Every priest has got that privilege in consultation with the Holy Ghost to design the materials that he needs to share to the people. But I've designed not to go more than 20 minutes with this subject. Just a few materials. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall leap sparingly. How many of you saw that the seed that was planted on the good ground did not bear the same results? Huh? Yes, sir. Do you know the seed was planted on the good ground but never produced the same results? Because what, what were the results? 30, 60, and 100. A hundredfold is the complete result. So him that got 60 had a shot of 40. Him got, that got 30 had a shot of 70. Hundredfold 
is the complete result. But why should a seed be planted on the good ground? Still, it's a good seed planted on the good ground, but it is giving you 30. Because there is sparingly and it won't flee. It's a seed, but is it in the category of bondfulness? You get what I'm saying? There will be results. So the one who gets 30 has results. The one who gets 60 has results. Just like the one who gets 140. Both planted. Both planted on the good ground. But there is sparingly and bondfulness. You follow what I'm saying? You will hear the testimony of a man who came from Lilongwe. Got a story about CD planting from a friend. How that person, CD planting two years ago, changed his story. Didn't know what to do, he was encouraged. This is a place which changed my life. What should I do now? I want my life to change too. He has no friend, no relation in a, in a, in a planter. Goes and sells his minibus at 800,000. And it takes 600 from 800 as a seed. Make sure he takes night compost so that he arrives here Sunday, attend and goes back. Leaves 100 to, to his wife and comes here. And he planted 600,000. God says, you don't do that with me. In 24 hours, God has given him 640 million. In the pockets. In a foreign currency, mm. pounds, mm. 450,000 pounds in a pocket. Mm. You hear the testimony is coming to testify. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so if you're thinking these are jokes, your friends will be coming here to take their destiny in a different direction. A man struggling, a man struggling, he's a farmer. He has never seen a pound. And God knows how to package. Not 20 pounds, 50. <laughs> we had to ask him to go and sleep at the hotel. Because he, he went crazy, he was just crying. He had just changed the half of those folex at 290 million. And he says, I'm looking at 290 here. <laughs> if you think the seed is not working, your friends, in 24 hours, in 24 hours. <laughs> You see, you, you, it's easier to become familiar and other people who have no familiarity with it to take it so seriously and reap from it. God cannot receive a seed and look away. And look away. Yes. Mm. You should be checking your pockets now. I'm telling you. <laughs> You, 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 oh yes, I'm telling you. If it is a little seed, if it's a little seed, some of you that are hearing this now, it won't take more than 24 hours before something happens to you too. God duplicates the testimony. For your information when I heard about this, because... How, how many of you, you, you held me emphasizing a lot? Check your bags. Check whatsoever. Check whatsoever. I did not just emphasize that. I knew what God is going to do. He will put money. He will put money. Today, God is going to supply someone else. And he hasn't finished. 
He hasn't finished, I'm telling you. Yeah. If he has indeed received the seed, imagine 600,000. But that was a little seed. Mm. You can't sell your minibus, the only minibus, mm. at 800, mm. and you take 600 as a seed. Mm. Come on, let's be real. If it were you, how much you would have taken from 800? 50. <laughs> be real. If you could have thought about 600 to go to and give it to God as a seed. You know this is the last pain and this is the only business we have. You will see the farmer coming, a mat millionaire. So this is a bit, bit here. <laughs> God has got his way. A better way of prospering people. Yeah. As I'm talking now, dollars are moving. They are moving. You see, our country is going through forex challenges, but God can just put $450 pounds in a peso. <laughs> No, no problem with the folex. No problem with the folex. The whole bank cannot give you 400. Even 50. You apply and you wait. For months and months and months. For 50,000 pounds. God says, I'll just put it in your, in your pocket. Wow. I'll pack it. This pocket, this pocket, this pocket, this pocket. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. <laughs> Not more than one week, 24 hours. You plant a seed on Sunday, Monday, you are matrimonial. What's this of 20 million need? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the least is this. We all plant. But how much do, do we take it seriously? Did, did we really honor God for this? Did you really consider this is about my whole year? This is about the whole year? Or is a city for two weeks? Did you take it seriously to God? It's not a mount, remember. It's not about the mount. I'm not dealing with the mount here. I'm talking about a seed. It's not how much. It's about that which God and you felt it in your spirit, God says, separate this for me, for I'm about to do something to you. And you do it joyfully, joyfully, that I have done what God instructed me to do. Without looking backwards, checking about what's going to happen the next three months. But joyfully, because you have done what God wanted you to do. Do you think it was easy for Abraham to give Isaac? You have one child, not three, four, five. This is your, the only biological child that you have with your wife. And God comes and says, I need him. You think it was easy? Okay, okay, I'll give you Isaac, it's okay. It wasn't. <laughs> So you think God has changed when he's demanding a city from you? That today you ask him for something that you don't want? No, he hasn't changed. When you give him a chance to come and minister to you a seed, he will drop something very important and ask you to give it away. But that changes your life forever. Changes your life forever. Changes your life forever. We'll keep on hearing these testimonies. This is not the last time. Amen. Keep on hearing many testimonies. Amen. Some of you, how God will promote you. Amen. That you, you, there is no time for pro In fact, you'll be promoted when it's no time for the promotion at your, at your working place. For you to know this is God. This is God. Salary changing. And your, your accounts department says, ah, but that's your salary. That's the that's amount you've been receiving all along. He says, no, I've been receiving one million. But they have put now six million. They say, no, our records are showing. That's your salary. Find out everywhere. That's the money we give it to you as your grade. And you know, I can't argue more here. 
I can't continue to argue on this part. Seed has worked. Amen. Seed has changed the figures. Amen. Yeah. Now, I wanted you to see this. First Corinthians 9:11. First Corinthians 9:11. Now, okay, I'll say this at the, at the very end. <laughs> I'll say this at the very, very end so that I help some of you because God's word corrects us. God's word is able to correct us. You know that? And when it corrects you, you need to be correctable. Huh? says, I've been corrected by the world. That's how you do it. Praise God. All right, look at this. He says, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing? If we reap from your, from your, we reap your carnal things? Do you know what he's trying to say to you? Reaping carnal things is cheap and easy if you have sown spiritual seed. Is it something great if we come and reap not spiritual as well, but carnal things? Give me an N-O-L-O-T. Let me just show you this. N-A-N-L-O-T. Look at this. He says, we have planted good spiritual seed among you. Is it too much to ask in return for the mere food and clothing? Do you think this will be too much? That won't be too much at all. He's trying to tell you it's not too much if you have planted spiritual seed. Spiritual seed is higher than physical stuff. In fact, it, it empowers you. It empowers you to reap things that are physical. Things that are physical, it's, it's actually an empowerment by this spiritual seed. I want you just to get something else so that you see. Father, we bless your name. Give me an, an, an ROT. I wanted an ROT so that you see something else. You see how it's going to. An ROT? Huh? How, how come mine is different? We have different N ROTs, isn't it? Can I read mine? Oh, oh, 2007. So there are two. Thank you very much for educating me. I was wondering, since we have planted spiritual seed among you, aren't we entitled to a harvest of physical food and drink? In other words, that gives you entitlement. You can talk to anything physical and say, you have to come to me. Why? I have planted a spiritual seed. I am in charge and in control of the physical matters because of the spiritual seed I've, I've planted. It doesn't become difficult. It empowers you over physical things when you do something spiritual. That's the power of the seed. Power of the process that we are doing. That now when you pray, you have got, you have got the right. When you are in your house and you are praying for the physical things of your life, you pray with entitlement, with authority. Money cannot question while you are talking to them. Money will hear your voice. You'll be able to move things because there is a spiritual seed planted. You can talk to them. Yeah. Says Paul, we know 
Jesus, we know who are you. In other words, do you have the right? Do you have the right? There are certain things in the spirit. It's not about the anointing. It's having the right over it. Authority over those things. It says, who are you to talk to us? Do you know money talks in that way to some of us? It says, hey, who are you to talk to us? Do you have a right to be moving us? <laughs> You have no right to be moving us. But these are things that give us authority, entitlement over physical matters. These are things that you do and you can tell that I will never be poor in my life. In 2023, I will never struggle. He says, how do you know? I'm in charge, sir. I have planted a spiritual seed that has, a, that has given me the power over the physical stuff. Yes, I'm telling you. And then in your room, you pray and things happen. Now, what I've said here, some of you are beginning to realize. You, do you, you did notice. What you did notice is, when I went to Corinthians, I was about to deal with this something. Ndabwerera. The reason why Ndabwerera, I could have made many of you to realize you didn't plant a seed. I'm wearing a manager. I picked in the spirit. I says, let me get back. Let me not go there. But as a person, I need to be educating you. Now, the reason why you say, then educate us. But do you know the reason why? I cannot educate you now. I was supposed to tell you this before you planted. But not telling you after you have planted. Then I'm not a good pastor. What you need to know, if it's a seed to God, something is happening. God can't. But this is what you need to know. There is always the word of God corrects us. A man should be corrected by the word. And I found out from the scriptures, when you are corrected by the word of God, correction, it's like this, so that you understand. I start my life here. This is where I start my spiritual journey. Things that I've been doing are errors, mistakes, errors, mistakes, errors, mistakes. And mind you, any mistake in the spirit has got a consequence. It's either it will delay you, okay, or it will lessen the glory on your life. Because it's not the perfect way God wants it to be done. So the way you are doing things, God sees that's not the way things are supposed to be done. He wants to release what He wanted. So here, you were praying for something, you did it in the wrong way, God says, ah, 30, 30, 40. 30, 40. 60, 40. 30, 40. So, unditima 30, 40. 30, chan, 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 ka, 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 30, ka, 90, ka, ka, 30, ka, grace, ka, ka, 60, ka, ka, chan, chan. Because you are making mistakes. You can't get to 100 fold of what you're supposed to get. Here, God corrects you. What? Oh no. So you mean all what I've been doing is wrong? Father, I'm sorry. Do you know what happens? The Bible says when God forgives, forgets. That tells you there is no wrong past with you. Everything else which was wrong in the past, because it does not mean those things are going to be taken away. They are part of your life. It's the grace of your life. It's the anointing of your life. Everything is corrected. By the enlightenment of today, you change the whole 10 years of your life. Yes. You find out from here when you said, Lord, now I know. The 30, 30, 40 that you got in 2014 changes immediately while you are here to 140. Yes. From there, you start to flow in the perfection of everything that you did wrong in the past. Yes. That's the goodness of God. Let me show you something that happens. People, sometimes you may, you, you may never know how. You see, that's why you need to be corrected by the world. <laughs> 
You need to give yourself when the word of God is correcting you. You don't know how much you correct yourself. Yeah. What happens? Yes, for the salvation of the world. What happens? Abraham, Daniel, these are all men that did right, but in a lesser way, because they were in the Old Testament. They couldn't do it the right way, but God saw their hearts. But you know what? When Jesus offered the sacrifice, that the blood of Jesus went up to Abraham, went up to Adam, and he perfected them. <laughs> Made them the saints. And they came out from the grave as born again believers. Jesus as the first fruit. Nobody went to heaven with a short force. By perfect sacrifice, he has perfected. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews. He has perfected. And because he's able, he says, he's able to do that to the utmost. One perfect sacrifice changes everything. That's what happens. You may never know that in a certain area of your life, you got, you touched the grace of God in 2015, but you got it in a wrong way. So the, the, what you got was a little grace. Because you have never known the truth in that area. The day the truth comes, it's not like you start today. You start from 2014, when you got it. God simply elevates it to the level that you're supposed to, to move in the perfection to, from today. And from today, you don't need to say, let me touch it in the new way. No. Of course, you are touching it in the new way. But it's not like you go to another man to put it again in the hands. No, you already have it. What is needed, what is rather waiting, or rather what is missing is only the perfection, understanding. Once understanding comes, it changes everything in your life. I, I, I love this part. In, uh, go to, you know in Genesis 49, Jacob was talking to the, to the sons. Huh? Genesis 49. Uh, he was talking to his sons. Just look at this. Can, can I lead a couple of scriptures so that you follow through? Yes, sir. We start from one, he says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourself together that I may tell you that which shall be for you in the last days. Now, this which shall for you in the last days, they didn't know what God was saying to them. He's defining them as a tribe. Yes, this is where tribal blessings started. He says, what will fall on you in the last days was actually the definition of their seed. Whoever is going to be born through that seed will be different. By the words he's about to talk here. This is where Judah came from. The scepter of kings and everything came from here. But I want you to see something else. Go down to two. Uh, uh, gather yourself together and hear ye sons of Jacob. He came unto Israel your father. Go to three. I'll, I'll get to Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity and the excellence of power. Go down. I want you. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my coach. You know Reuben slept with the wife of Jacob. You know that? So he's being cursed because of what he did. But I want you to see four, five. Simeon and Levi. Simeon and Levi. Keep the word Levi. Look, he's going to talk to them both. Our brethren, you do the same things, you guys. 
instruments of cruelty are in your habitation. You will be a, a generation of anger, a tribe full of anger, fighting one another. You know some people you wonder, everywhere they go, it's, they will fight with people. For them to say this is my enemy is no more. No more, no more. And they don't care. In every year they know they, have, they create an enmity with other people. They are enemies every year. That's what we do. Ah. Mish, na shout na nanai ya meni uchi. Na kalipi ya nanai. Si machi ya sonai. January, February, March. Ah. Na shout na nanai sonai. Very, very normal. Very, very normal. It's, it's normal for, for, for that person or for people from that, from that family to do those things. Sometimes you may never know what you need to deal with in your family. That's what happens there. Six. If, I don't know if they're good. Oh my soul, come not thou into their secret. Jacob is saying, please. I shouldn't even come closer to these people. He says, unto the assembly, mine honor be not thou united. For in their anger they sue a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Simeon and Levi, cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in his life. He had a curse from their father. The father says, because of what you did, I see you scattered. No matter how much you try. I don't know if eight goes on. Uh, Judah, then Judah is going to speak to Judah. But I want you to see something. In chapter 32, Exodus, chapter 32, Let me cut short so that you understand what I, I'm about to, to tell you. Okay? Uh, you start leading from verse, uh, from verse 1. You lead it from verse 1, the whole story. I'll give you the background and I'll give you the verse. Moses is in the mountain receiving the, the law from God. He's receiving it from God. And then he hears, in fact, God is the one who told him, he says, we are stopping what we are doing here. Go back, because your people have transgressed. He says, what? He says, oh, yes. Then he takes, you know, he was with Joshua. So they start to go down the mountain. He finds there is a calf that these people have mounted. And they're worshiping it because they said he's taking long. Remember, he took about 40 days. He says, he's taking long to be in the mountain. Let's find God has killed him. Let's find something to worship. Remember, we are worshiping the God through him. We can't reach him. So let's have a God that we are able to relate. So they pressured Alon. Alon took God from the people, moted, moted a, a, a statue for people to be worshiping. And this day, they are busy dancing, busy dancing, busy dancing around this, this cup. These are people that their leader has just left to meet the Creator. <laughs> this kind of a church. <laughs> now, he comes down. Joshua couldn't pick it he, because Moses simply told him, he says, we have to go down. Something wrong is happening. Then as they were coming close, as they were getting down, Joshua said, I'm hearing the sound. I think people are celebrating our coming. <laughs> that's what Joshua said to Moses. Moses told Joshua, he says, no, that's not the joy for dancing. It's not the joy for worship or celebration for us. That's not what I'm picking. Then he comes down, I want you to see, at 25. Give me 25. we we'll start from there. I, I was narrating the whole story. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, imagine. 
again. <laughs> for the people, he says, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. He, had, he was so angry when he came. So angry. So angry at these people. And then in verse 26, I want you to see, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and he said, who is on the roadside? Who is on the roadside? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Revi gathered themselves together unto him. Oh my God. When they stood and made a choice, we are going to stand for God. God says the mistake is going to be corrected here. When God now spoke to Moses, who should be people that can save him? God says, I want the tribe of Levi. The same that Jacob was saying, your anger is too much. I don't want my soul to be closer to you. Correction changes, changed everything. Don't, don't continue making mistakes in your life. There's a room for change to everybody with God. Now we talk about the Levites. People that God gave them the title for the... Imagine title was theirs. God says this tribe is, sac is a sacred. I will be their possession. And I was in Peter Zikari Majanjan in Samari Mayor. I will pay them. And I carry around my temple. The same people that Jacob said, I see something wrong with you guys. And I'm cursing you. They stood before God. Made a good decision in life. So do not let mistakes to continue. Or for you to continue making mistakes. Realize first the mistakes of your life. And be able to say, Lord, I'm going to stand for you. Today I'm making a decision. This can't continue. This life has to change. I made a very important decision I've ever told you many times. When I knew God would trust me with the resources. When I made a mistake and I was corrected. When those tears came down my, my cheeks, I said I will never cry because of this from today. Not from today. I don't want to, to lose the, the trust, the stewardship from God over the resources. Just because I'm careless. And it was not somebody's money. It was my sister's money. Which I misused. But that day, when the word was spoken, do you know where you're going? Do you know how much God will put under your trust? Do you want to make people that are with you poor? Do you know the pastor can make everybody poor? Yes. A pastor can make everyone poor. Because God cannot trust him with money. He will make sure the people that sit under him don't have money. Seriously, I'm telling you. Everyone. It takes the man in front to be really trustworthy before God. God to find him trustworthy that he can say, I can put this into your hands and you're going to use it in the right way. Then the same grace he carries, he releases it to everybody. Yeah. Mistakes can be corrected. Mistakes in life can be corrected. And this is what you see. You see the Levites, but many of you maybe you are seeing this for the first time. You didn't know that they had a case on them. They changed the case to a blessing. They got the honor. They ended the honor in the eyes of God. Ended the honor after making mistakes. Because when they made a mistake, they realized, yeah, we are not going to go against God. We are going to stand on behalf of God. It's only the Levites. And God says, you are special to me. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Have you read something else? Thank God for a few minutes. Father, we thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for your correction. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your word, O oh God. We appreciate your word, which is able to build us up, to correct us, O oh God, to direct us in the right way in life. We bless and worship you. We magnify your name. We glorify your God. We give exhortation and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Let's get into the study now of, I know time is not with us, but let's just take it for a few minutes only. Uh, we are now dealing with the second one, which is the, the way of a man. The way of a man, which is the strategy from or by senses. Strategy by senses. Our key scripture has been Proverbs chapter 20 verse 18. And the, we have been looking at James. At James, Proverbs chapter 20 verse 18. We have been leading in, in both King James and the Passion version. Okay? It says, every purpose is established by counsel. So I told you that counsel, purpose there is the goals of life, the intentions of life. These are things that we say, I want to accomplish this in this year. The Bible says, you know what? Coming up with goal, a goal of life or goals of life is not enough. Because you only establish the goals when you have got a counsel. If you have a right counsel, which is basically the strategy, the wisdom that you need to come up with, with, with attainable actions, small attainable actions. And I told you, when you are making goals, strategies in life, do not make them for a long term. Because strategies are supposed to be evaluated. And when you find out that the strategy is not working, it is not wrong to change it. You don't change what you want to achieve at the end. What you change is a strategy to achieve it. You can be pursuing a strategy that is not working. It won't be wrong. And for your information, let me say this. Many times people, you see, strategy is what we get involved in. And very easy sometimes to get too, too, too into a strategy and forget the goal. Because the strategy is the action that you are involved in. These are things that you are doing. And you can fall in love with the strategy and forget the goal. Let me give you an example. You may say, we are saving. We are saving for a house. We are saving for a project. We are saving money to, to buy a car. We are saving money for something. You have something that you want. Okay, we want to buy a car. That's one of the things we want, we want to accomplish this year. Okay, we want to do this. This is what I want to accomplish this year. How am I going to do it? We need about 15 million. You sit down with your wife. Look at the money that comes in. If you put them together, they are not coming to 15 million. And then you say, to one another, what do we need to do? Are we changing the goal? He says, no, we are not changing the goal. Because it's burning in us. We feel this is something we need to do it this year. And believe you me, that's the right attitude. Don't give up on what you seriously sense in your spirit. Because you cannot find a way. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's very wrong. Because words are, are found. <laughs> oh, 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 let me put it this way. It's, it's an honor for you, for God to tell you what you need to accomplish. You, you cannot put the way to achieve it over and above the goal. Then you don't appreciate for God to tell you this is what I want you to accomplish. It's a greatest honor. So you don't abandon it. What you need is just to find time to seriously seek from yourself inside and find wisdom to achieve it. 
There is always a way to achieve anything in life. People that don't achieve anything else are people that are tired to think. They don't want to find a way to achieve it. But otherwise, if you are so determined, there is always a way to achieve anything that you want. For your information, let me put it very plain to you. Mostly, if it's something that you are pursuing, you have a testimony of somebody who ever did it. Then he has simplified it. Because if it has happened once, it can happen twice. Possibly you should be struggling for the things you have never held. But why should you worry that it's impossible and you are too concerned in buying a car, in building a house? How many people are building houses? So these are achievable. Achievable. All what you need to do, put a goal and then pressure your mind, pressure your spirit to bring an answer. There must be a way to achieve it. Take your time. Lock yourself in a room and find wisdom. Lord, how do I achieve it? God will tell you. Expand, increase. Income streams in you. Salary won't be enough. This year, if you want to do this, increase the streams. Do A, B, C, D. Then he says, okay, we will still go on to do it. Now, when, what I was saying to you, when you start January, don't put a strategy that will take you up to November. Because it is November now that when you are taking a variation of your strategy, it will be too late. The year has already gone. You break it into as short a term as you can. So that if it is not working, you can go back to God and say, Lord, the way is not working for me. I still want to do this. But possibly in four months. You still have six months to go. You still have eight months to go. And you know, if God will help me here, I will change the strategy and I'll still manage to fulfill it. My prayer is that no one under the sound of my voice should fail to accomplish what he has purposed in 2023. Whether it's a ministry, whether it's about your house, whether it's about your career, something about you. May the Lord help you to give you the right ways to achieve it. May you find a way to achieve it. We give you honor, we give you the praise. We worship you, we bless your name. Oh yes, from today, I want you to be saying to yourself, there is a way to achieve it. And I'm accomplishing it, no matter what. Whether the devil likes it, whether the world supports me or not, I will achieve it. I will make it. No matter what. The God whom I save shall help me. The God whom I save shall help me. Mashakata Karaba. Rida Baba Baba Karaman Torobosi. Riate Kerebando. Riamande Reba Sikata Karabaya. Rede Bebe Sikata Karamanto. Mama Mama Mandorobo Sikete Kerebea. Mande Reba Sikete Kerebea. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I lift you. 
Lord, I exhort you. Lord, I worship you. I magnify your God. I give you the honor and praise. I worship and adore your God. I magnify your God. I give exhortation and praise. Ravande rebase keteka. Riada baka soto roboya. Riade baka soto korobonde. Miande rebasi keterebea. Rade baso to koromonde. Seke ne basi amato. Bando la masika ya matosha. Rekone masika ya mata ba. God is going to help you. You are the help from God. That's why you are born again. That's why the Holy Ghost is in you. Oh, yes. I'll make it. I'll make it. I'll make it in 2023. I'll make it in 2023. I'll make it in 2023. Masakara baba baba, rada baba baba bandere basi katara ba. Mando robosi kete kerebe. Ravande remando robosi. Kiribiando robosi katakara ba. Rada baba 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 baba. Rade basi kete kerebe. No one is stopping us. We are not going to be stopped. We are unstoppable. Unstoppable in 2023. We are going for that which we are sensing in our spirit. Jesus, Father, put it. Oh God, oh God, oh God. A way to believe it. 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 Accomplish the plans by the grace of God. By the grace of God. By the anointing of God. Oh yes. By the Spirit of God. Oh yes. There has to be a way by the Spirit of God to put it in your life. 
worship the Holy Spirit. Father, we appreciate for your word. We appreciate for touching us. 
We appreciate oh God for speaking to our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. A release upon your life. Wisdom for the time. Regardless of how difficult it is in the world, if it is a goal that the Lord wants you to accomplish, wisdom for this time, wisdom for this time, it is imparted in your life. 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 In your life. I make you the best setters of our time. I make you the best setters of our time. The best setters of our time. The best setters of our time. Manda ba 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 ba. You start and they'll follow. 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 And release the wisdom. To do it in the name of Jesus. May there be baptism. Baptism of wisdom. Baptism of wisdom. Baptism of strategies. Baptism of strategies. In the name of Jesus. He will feel it in your night time. He will feel it in your day time. He will feel it in visions, in dreams, by the ministry of the word. He will feel it in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Connect yourself to it. Take it to yourself. You are being baptized by the Holy Ghost into the spirit of wisdom. Into the spirit of wisdom. Understanding what to do. Understanding what to do. Knowing what to do. And whatever is going to come, you will never miss it. You will never miss it. You are going to be circumspect. You are going to be exact. Rafanda Ramaya Zeka Takaraba Zeke Tekereba. I know what to do. I know what to do. I know what to do. I'm well directed. I'm well led. I'm well directed. I am well advised. I know what to do. I know what to do. I'm gonna achieve it. 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 Rata Karaba, 
Zata Karama, Rada Bakata, Zeke Tekera, Rida Bababanda Sik, Rida Bakateka Sa, Rida Babakateka, Zeke Tekereba, Rida Bamanda Raba, Rikata Kaseta, Mando Bokatika, Siada Bababa, Rada Bakatika, Rada Babando, Zeke Tekerebe, Siada Bababa, Rada Bakate Terebe, Zeke Tenarama. Riada bando robo, rida baka se, zeke teka ma, mama mato, riabata, zeka tando ro, riabate ke, zeka mando ro, riada baba, rika taterebe, zike tetere ma, mata karaba. Lord, you do once, you do to another person. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let the seed of someone, the seed of someone. The seed of summer produce oh God in 24 hours. Let it produce. Produce oh God in the name of Jesus. The seed of summer. The seed of summer. The seed of summer. The seed of summer. In the name of Jesus. In a mysterious, in an unlikely way, in an unlikely way, in an unlikely way, our faith is charged, O God. We are expectant, O God. We are expectant, O God. Something will happen. Something will happen to my life. Something will happen. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Something is going on. Something is happening. Manda bakataka, riaba ba 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 ba. Lord, we move the realm of the spirit, the heavenly realm, in physical world. We are moving, oh God, the heavenly realm, the heavenly realm, the heavenly realm, in this physical. Mata karaba, raba ba ba, zakata karaba, reba ba 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 ba. The heavenly realm. In my world, oh God. In my world, oh God. The heaven arrived. In my world, oh God.
that are taking place in our lives in our homes in our career Lord thank you for intervening thank you for stepping in thank you for shortening the process we give you honor we give you the praise thank you for touching our lives thank you for blessing us for empowering us for anointing us for giving us the grace that we need. We worship and bless your name. We live here, Lord, knowing that something has happened to us. And we are going to testify of your goodness, of your glory. As we live, oh God, cover our lives. May you watch over our steps. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you so much. What a night. What a night. What a night. What a night. Oh, it feels as something else has started happening in the realm of the spirit and all oh, what I'm asking you jump into the flow the liver is moving is it flowing jump into it don't stand and watch because it will be too late for you by the time you realize that this was meant for everyone when you sense the liver is flowing, jump into it. I want you to leave tonight knowing that no matter what, whether the world, the conditions of the world are okay, whether you have got support or no support, you have got connections, this human connection or you don't have human connection, whether the devil has risen and is fighting against you, but what you have purposed, in 2023, you will see it coming to pass. The Lord is directing you. The Lord is leading your way. And I want you also to leave this place knowing that tomorrow morning you may wake with a testimony. You may not, the sun may not set tomorrow without the, the, the seed of your life speaking for you. Go with expectancy. That what I have held, that you have already started doing, oh Lord, mine is also coming. And it's not next week. It's not next month. It's tomorrow. Live by that faith of tomorrow. That when you wake up, you expect something is going to take place. I want you to live with this so that as we meet on Sunday, you have something to testify in Jesus' name. God bless you so much. The door is open. See you on Sunday. We are back on Sunday here. Last Sunday we didn't meet because of seed planting. But this Sunday we are back in the afternoon. God bless you so much. The door is open. God bless you.